I'm Elizabeth Burgum. I'm Daniel Ockelberg. I'm Brianna Carter. And I'm Hannah DeMartelaire. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. Mary, you've had that same lamb for years. Well, it's from my grandfather's flock. I can't get rid of it. Well, don't you want to improve your genetics? Hi, we're the Sheepdogs from West Ottertail County, and we're advocates for the National Sheep Improvement Program. NSIP, isn't that like pneumonia? No, Mary. NSIP stands for the National Sheep Improvement Program. It's a program that was established in 1986 to help producers all over the world make specific genetic enhancements and improvements to their flocks. The mission of the National Sheep Improvement Program is to increase production for all the producers to keep up with the increasing demands in both the meats and wool industries. An index? Isn't that part of a book? No, an index is the characteristics of the sheep in the sheep industry. And there are many of them, like growth traits such as the birth weight, the weaning weight, and the post weaning weight. Wool traits such as staple length and carcass traits such as fat depth and loin muscle depth, reproduction like number of lambs born and number of lambs weaned, and parasite resistance like worm egg count. EBV, that sounds like a disease. EBVs are estimated breeding values. They're the inheritance of, a, they're the, inheritance of the difference of performances in the offspring. So Ram A has two positive traits, and Yu He has no positive or negative traits. When they have twins, each lamb will have one positive trait, and it will increase the flock numbers. Ram B has two negative traits, and Yu A once again has no positive or negative traits. Each lamb will then get one negative trait, and their flock will not increase as well. EPD, I thought we were talking about sheep, not the stock market. Mary, we're still talking about sheep. Expected progeny differences are the inheritance of a trait specifically bred for that trait. So is the use of the National Sheep Improvement Program actually progressing? Of course. They've made m multiple advances in many breeds, including the Targi and the Suffolk. The Suffolk breed is the, one of the most progressive breeds so far that we have seen that uses the National Sheep Improvement Program. Within the past 10 years, we have seen many different improvements in different areas within the Suffolk breed, such as weaning weight and post weaning weight averages. In 2004, the weaning weight average was 7 kilograms or 15.4 pounds. But by the year 2014, the average went up to 18 kilograms or 39 pounds and 6 ounces, which is an increase of over 25 to 30 pounds. That's huge. And the post weaning weights average in 2004 started at 18 kilograms or 29 pounds. But by the year 2014, it went up to 40 kilograms, which equals 88 pounds. That's over 60 pounds in difference. That's huge. Also, another area of improvement in the Suffolk breed is here with the loin muscle depth and the fat depth. And as you can see, in 2004, it starts about equal, a little bit under, uh, a little bit under zero millimeters. Not very good. But by the year 2014, there's a drastic decrease, decrease in the fat depth and a massive increase in the loin depth which makes for a better product that's more desirable for consumers to have and eat. So what kinds of breeds are making progress? Well, the Targi breeders are making progress because they're willing to accept new technology and use it to improve their flock numbers. In this graph, it shows that the fleece weight, or FW, has increased greatly. And wool is used, so they sell it for per pound. 
So when it increases the weight, that means that the buyers are uh, buying it for more and the producers are getting more money for it. So they want to continue growing those sheep. The FD or fleece diameter has not increased or decreased and that's what you want it to do because if it gets too thick or too thin, it's not usable for consumers. The sample length has increased a little bit, but you want it to just, you don't want it to go too far up and down. Um, the length means that there's going to be more wool on the sheep and it's going to be longer, so you're not going to have to have as many sheep for more money. So what is... Before you ask, NLB is the number of lambs born. So from 2004 to 2014, this shows that the number of lambs born per ewe has increased greatly. So that means there are more lambs in the flock. You see, one of the major uh, issues in the sheep industry is that people are not accepting the technology. They're always caught on their tradition ways. And so it's like Uh. Well, our advisor, who has been helping us with our program, Levon, she has a herd of Suffolk, and we talked to her about it, and she has this one lamb that she's had for years, well, I guess it's a ewe now, but every time she breeds it, it prolapses, and she has to call the vet out, so we asked her, we're like, why do you keep this? And her answer was, well, it's one of my Montana ewes. I can't get rid of it. But then recently we spoke to her again, and she talked to us about how she has finally accepted the National Sheep Improvement Program, and for the past three years she has been buying her rams from a producer that uses the National Sheep Improvement Program, and she's just so happy with the way her flock has turned out. We have also talked to... Dr. Rusty Burgett. Uh, so, the way he kind of described it is, it's like a new tractor. It might be a little hard to operate at first, but after you get everything working and after you understand the system, you wouldn't have it any other way. The way Einstein puts it, insanity doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting different results. <laughs> so are there any dilemmas with the National Sheep Improvement Program? Well, one of the main dilemmas is actually that producers are getting too old, and there's not any new people to fill in their shoes. We're hoping that maybe this organization can spark a new interest in the new members, the new farmers of the sheep organization and maybe we can get those numbers rising in a positive direction once again. As you can see in this graph, uh, the breeding ewes and the lamb crop went from somewhere around 7.5 million down to 3.5 million in the last 30 years. That's a drastic drop. You see, the lambs per 100 ewes always stays at about 100 on this graph. Well, 50 years ago, it wasn't uncommon for the Targi breed to have four, to have like triplets or quads when they were giving birth. Nowadays, the new norm is singles or twins. You see, we're actually breeding for singles because when we go out and buy a sheep, we're judging just on appearance. It's an on-site buy. You don't go and look at the genetics. So how am I supposed to be able to tell if it has twins or triplets? Generally, the best looking sheep is a single because it got the most nutrition as a child. See, uh, singles are those aren't desirable. I mean, you want doubles and, yeah. 
to improve your flock. So you've shown me the improvement of the sheep industry. Well, can you compare that to other industries? Well, see here, the beef has actually improved greatly since they started their genetic improvement programs. Their production has, has gone up and their numbers of actual stock have gone down. And that's what we're trying to get for the sheep organizations and the sheep farmers. Because overall, you want more meat per animal, and that makes it a more efficient crop for you. So why does the National Sheep Improvement Program actually matter? Well, Mary, the National Sheep Improvement Program matters because the sheep industry needs to learn how to keep up with its competitors. The UN has set out a prediction that there will be a 73% increase in demands for proteins by the year 2050. And that's largely due to third world countries wanting to be able to purchase proteins now that they can. And if we do not learn how to produce more so that it costs less, we will be kicked out of the market completely. They're not going to want to buy our products because of how much they cost. So what's in it for me? Well. Being a student that gets paid minimum, well, less than minimum wage, I want the most bang for my buck. You know, I don't want to go and out and buy a ram that throws singles and run-of-the-mill singles at that. I want something that has good genetics, something that can throw me good kids and throw me twins and maybe even triples so then I can improve my herd. Not to mention how easy it is to set up your flock on, on the website. You see, all you have to do is fill out this sheet right here. All you have to do is put your name, your address, city, state, zip, email, phone, and then just some minor details about your herd. And you're signed up. And not to mention, if you're 18 and above, you get one year free. If you're below 18 years of age, which is me when I sign up, then I get three years, no charge. So it's risk free. You don't like it, you don't use it, which is very unlikely because the program works great. So we went to North Dakota State University in North Dakota, Bar Fargo, North Dakota, and talked to the director of the sheep program up there, because it's such a great sheep program. His name is Dr. Rusty Burgett, and he was also the NSIP chairman. So he gave us this wonderful presentation on the National Sheep Improvement Program to help us with our project, because he thought it was very important to get the word out there about the program. We also talked to Dr. Rusty Burgett and Mary Sorensen up from NSIP also about why they thought that people weren't joining. They said it was because people thought it was too much paperwork and there weren't any interest in it. So let me get this straight. If I, the National Sheep Improvement Program has helped advance uh, many genetics in many different flocks, and I should enroll now to improve my own flock's genetics and to improve the sheep industry as a whole. That's exactly right, Mary. So what do you say? Are you going to send your sheep to market? Well, if it helps the sheep industry, of course. Yes. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb that got shipped off to market. <laughs> you have any questions for us? Hi, uh, Mark Amerlink with the Minnesota Corn Growers Association. Um, uh, if I could ask you, this is not my question, but if I could ask you, uh, do, do all of you show sheep? Are you? Mm -hmm. Us well, three show sheep. These three do. I am, um, uh, I'd like to 
participate in like the vet sciences areas because that's where I'm going into for college next year. And so when they said they were doing one on sheep, I was like, well, since that's going to be my profession someday, I'll be your fourth person. Sure. So that, that, that's leading into my question, uh, and, and that is, um, how do you think that, that uh, uh, 4-H and, and, the, and the whole concept of, of showing sheep is helping or inhibiting um, the NSIP? I, I know that uh, you, know, you spent quite a bit of time uh, talking about how, why uh, sheep are bred and uh, what, they're, what they're judged on, and it seems to me that, that you're talking about single lambs for the most part. Yeah. And it also seems to me that that may be inhibiting uh, some, of the, some of the goals that NSIP is reaching for. So yeah. can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, uh, it actually can. See, showing sheep is great because it sparks an interest in young, in young youth, and it actually, it's part of the reason why the sheep industry, industry is still alive today. And, but also there's a lot of reasons why the showing is also kind of not good for the actual sheep industry as a whole because we're always looking for the bigger sheep, the better sheep, where actually we're breeding for singles because those are the big ones. They get the most nutrition when they're younger. And if we keep breeding for singles, eventually we might not get twins or triples. Okay, so I need to follow up on that. Do you have suggestions for the way that uh, sheep are shown? And do you think there should be other criteria that aren't there now? Yeah, there, um, cause with the, I got mic. Hmm. But with like the um, EBVs, those are judged, like, they do, um, they do judging where they look at EBVs and you compare. And those aren't always the biggest ones. So you should like, yeah, look at the estimated breeding values. And then that should be another criteria that would be a good addition to just the showing. But one of our um, extension office, we were talking to them, and they said that a lot of it is like a beauty pageant for showing. So it's not really on breeding itself. But yet again, in that retrospect, there's also ways that, I mean, if we all judge 100% on the EVP or EBD. EB, <laughs> EPD, then EBV, then uh, that's not that's not great either though because then we could just go out and buy the best EBV also. I mean, anybody can go out and buy great paperwork, mm -hmm. but I mean, so in that respect, it's okay to have a little bit of a beauty pageant, but uh, we got to remember where the sheep industry started from also. Mm -hmm. um, my question to you is uh, part of this program, and maybe I, I missed it, but um, has a lot to do with your mentor. So I'm wondering tell, if you could tell me a little bit more about your mentor, the thought-provoking questions that you interacted uh, with your mentor on to help you further your research with the, your presentation. Okay. So we do have a lot of sheep producers in West Otter Tail. We also talked to Darren Bauk, who is a big sheep producer around here, on why he doesn't use it. See, the main reason he said he doesn't use it is because he thinks it's too much paperwork. But as you can tell, it really isn't. Um, so there really aren't any reasons why people shouldn't be using it. Um, they just come up with reasons. So Darren's response to why we asked him why he didn't use it basically made our presentation on why we need to convince people to use it because they don't realize that when they do get started in this program this program stays forever like you can pass it down to your grandkids or anybody who wants to inherit your farm all those records stay and like I don't know I think that's <laughs> pretty important to have My question, I know you talked about um, protein being a 73% demand. Are mm -hmm. you finding there's a demand for sheep wool that it, you're needing to increase the flock? Um, there is and there isn't. Just because the sheep, the populations are going down, it's coming less and they're doing different alternatives mm -hmm. for fabrics. And they just want to get the production back up. 
so that it's another option again, like a cheaper option. Because if you've ever seen like sheep wool stuff in the stores, how expensive is that compared to the fake, the fake wool that there's right next to it? What are you gonna buy? Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to look for a way to make more to sell for cheaper than the product. I'm sorry, I talk with my hand. <laughs> hard. So as a former, I'm Amy Smith. I'm one of the um, ag ed faculty members here at the U. As a former sheep producer, I had my own extensive record keeping process and and system. So I'm not sure that I'm convinced of the value and I guess what was what's the cost as a producer? Like is there a for this? Mm -hmm. The first year is free. So what's it after the first year? I it depends on your flock size. Sorry. I think it was like is it on there? Yep. All right, so if you have a flock of one to twenty it's fifty dollars. 21 to 35, 100, 36 to 50, 150. It just uh, keeps going up all the way up and all the way up until 151 and over, and then it is $350. Okay, so for like a middle sized flock that I would have had, the advantage for me, if I'm interpreting this correct, is that then as I'm making genetic decisions as far as use or rams to purchase from other breeders, I'm able to search this and learn more about the data that they've collected on yep, their and you're flock. you're able to see other people's flocks oh, and that way you yeah. can like figure out what genetically works and how to improve your flock with other people's and so you can every, all share your data and everybody's flock on this program is public so everybody can look it up so if you're looking to make a purchase you don't have to be a part of the program but you can use their record to <laughs> make a decision gotcha okay so then I guess the second question is um, with the cost of that participation and again it's not huge I agree um, but with the demand for for lamb and the kind of lower price that you receive for wool is that something that y you as producers do you raise your own lambs that you show or do you purchase lambs to show yeah I raise my own okay. lambs can you talk through kind of your mental process for like whether that's a value that's how you determine whether that's a good investment or whether you're not going to recoup that that money? Oh uh, well, it's definitely a good investment because I mean, uh, when when I'm selling and when when other when I'm buying, I'll know exactly what I'm buying, and then when I'm selling, uh, it'll get me out there. Everybody will know what I have. It, yeah. <laughs> Last question. Um, so, have you the the individuals that have sheep? Have you signed up for NSIP at this point? It sounds like it's free for the first three years. Yep. Yeah, I have. <laughs> You're a participant. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I actually I lease my sheep from my uncle and my cousin that live up there somewhere, and. <laughs> So I don't actually own my own sheep, but I do lease them, and I have talked to them about why they don't enter it, which they didn't give me very good reasons for why they aren't in it either, but I know they don't do it, but there are plenty of people that are in it and feel that it is a good program too. And by doing this presentation for people in, like in our county, and we're hoping to get it out there and try to get other people more involved in it so the industry can improve. And there's obviously a lot of individual gains that you can get from this program, but the main gain that we're trying to do is for the sheep industry as a whole. Mm -hmm.